everybody, my name is Chase Pike, and you're watching Chasing History, brought to you by Smoke Mountain Relic Room and Arrowheads.com, and we're here, our good buddy Eric Miller. Now, Eric's going to talk to us about two species of dinosaurs, Spinosaurus and the Carcharodontus. Talk about some of these species. What period of time are we talking about here? Okay, this is during the Cretaceous period, roughly 100 million years. So about 100 million years ago. Okay. Right. And what part of the world are we in? We're in uh, Morocco, specifically extreme southern Morocco, an area called the Kem Kem region. Okay. Okay. Now, at this period of history, you know, the continents weren't drifting apart like they are today. Is this during the period that we would call Pangaea, where everything's kind of all together? Everything has just started to separate. Just started to break apart. So this is this is a time when the continents have been together, but we can see by the divergence of dinosaurs that they have been separating for a little while, so now we're getting different species. Okay, so one of those species in the debate that you get is is the Carcharodontus. It's also known as the African T-Rex. Is this that period where we start to see this species kind of develop on its own? Well, this species, Carcharodontosaurus saharicus, this particular species is an Allosaurus, so it's a lot like its predecessor in North America, in Alice. So it had incredible tools for taking down prey. So, okay, so here's here's the team, all right? And what's interesting, what can we tell about this animal's life by just looking at the team? Okay, this tooth, this one in particular, is a tooth that has a blade-like shape, okay. and just like a steak knife, it has serrations. So when you feel this, go ahead, Chase. You can, ah, that's cool! You can feel serrations on both sides. You gotta see this. Look at the serrations on this thing. Yeah, is that not cool? It's still, even to this day, it's 100 million years old, and it's still serrated. That's awesome! Now, what about this part right up here on the tip? Well, this is a natural wear, and I can show it better on these two teeth. Let's walk over and let's show show what we're talking about, about the natural wear. So right there, so when you say natural wear, that's in the life of the dinosaur, just it eating and doing its thing, and that's just the natural wear, as if it was fresh in its mouth, this is what it would look like. That's right. So it's not... So that's not... It's, not, it's not an artifact of digging. Because okay. you can see in this particular tooth that it could have been something where the digger hit it and chipped it, but during its life, it smoothed this ah. part just from wearing it. So here's okay. another tooth of like kind, and maybe they even crossed, crossed over, over each other. That makes sense. So, and, and you can tell that because it's smooth. If a digger had hit it with the trowel, it would be chipped and fresh and, and, and have would, some hinge fractures on it. But because it's within, because uh, 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 it's all smoothed out, it's within the animal's lifetime. That's right. It's a bit, it's a bit like an arrowhead. God, so that's so in cool. an arrowhead, you get that conchoidal fracture. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The same thing would happen with dinosaur teeth. So many teeth that tell the story of living on beyond the chipping of a tooth, which we do too. Cool. Just like, exactly, just like archaeologists today, you know, they know more about uh, about human history, uh, especially where people lived and what kind of diet they had uh, by looking at their teeth. You can do the exact same thing with prehistoric dinosaurs and their teeth. Exactly. In fact, ah, that's cool! That's cool, man! Dinosaurs tell great stories, and geologists and paleontologists in specific really like to figure out the past from the present. Mm -hmm. So we look at present processes and we interpret the past based upon the clues given when we excavate something. How much do we still have to learn about this species? Let's say there's some paleontologists out there, young paleontologists up and coming, that are wanting to learn about the about more about these species. Is this species a really good candidate for future paleontologists to learn more about? Well, it is because there are no complete Carcharodontosaurus that have ever been found. That's in, cool. in fact, okay, in this part of the world, most of the dinosaurs 
are represented by only a few scattered bones and teeth. Kind of like the Spinosaurus was. That's right. Like we didn't. It, the only segment of the Spinosaurus that was uh, that was discovered was like back in the 20s, and it was in and it was just a sail part and a few other miscellaneous bones until what was it five or six years ago a 80% skeleton was found. Yes, that's that's pretty accurate, Chase. <laughs> I'm Cut. trying. Cut. So this is Spinosaurus, and years ago, Ernst Stroman was working in Egypt, and he found the first bones of Spinosaurus. And he found some pieces of femur, some pieces of spine, some back bones, some vertebra from the tail, and parts of the mouth. Okay. He took these back to Germany, where he continued his studies, and he had these in a museum in Dresden. And see, during World cool. War II, in one of the last bombing raids, the U.S. Air Force totaled that town with that particular museum yeah. and all of these bones. Luckily, Ernst Stromer had done some sketches of the ones he had. But that was the most complete spinosaur that had ever been found until the National Geographic Group a few years ago tried to assemble one from various parts of Spinosaur from different localities. Mm -hmm. So that's sort of a Frankensaur. Okay. And see, that's what a lot, of, like a lot of these dinosaurs that you see in museums, you know, they're not all from one species, or, or not. they're not all from one uh, single individual laid out perfect, all the bones there. What they would do is, is they would take parts and pieces from other dinosaurs and put it together in order to get one big, giant, complete dinosaur. And that's how they figure out what a lot of these things look like. Because, you know, you've got this thing died and sand gets covered over it or part of the tail goes away and it doesn't, the whole entirety of it doesn't get fossilized. That's right. So, so they take parts and pieces to try to put it all back together and figure out what it's like. And that's what they did with this, the National Geographic group did with this species. That's just right. Pulled back and forth. Now, let me ask you a question. Why are there so many Spinosaurus teeth out there? I have no clue. Okay. It's a mystery. It's a mystery, but I think that this animal was a very successful animal for about a million years, somewhere in that region. Now, Chem Chem today is a desert. There isn't a tree for 150 miles in any direction. But when this animal lived, it tromped around with these big feet in a lagoon situation, and it ate almost entirely fish. So, when you find spinosaur teeth, you find lung fish mouth plates, you find soft fish rostral spines, you find shark spines and vertebra, you find all the evidence, and it's all fish parts. So That's this this animal with this mouth, I imagine it standing a bit like a great blue heron or a stork or something in knee deep in water, and it would wait for a great big 16 foot garfish to come by, and then it would just go chomp. That's cool. And like munch a, on the garfish. A giant dinosaur blue heron. Yes. That's crazy. And re remember, Chase. Yeah. Dinosaurs are related to all the modern birds. So blue herons really are dinosaurs. dinosaurs. That's cool. And that would explain the snout and, and it's a, everything. It's a very crocodilian that's cool. Snout. Yeah, it is. Yeah, it is. So that's cool. When, when were they, uh, uh, when were the very first Spinosaurus discovered? When was this species first discovered? And I think it was 1925. 1925. Because see, here's the thing is, is this, uh, this part of science, this part of paleontology, is still relatively young. It's not even 100 years old. So you out there, if you want to, can get a degree in this, learn more about it, and complete the story. That's what's so cool about this history is, is that it's open to you to take charge of it and further the study of the science. That, ah, that's so, ah, that's cool, man. Ah, this is cool. Calm down. Calm down. <laughs> I can't, man. It's cool. Look, it's, and here's, here's the tooth from that species. And you can touch it. You can touch it. It's, ah, it's so cool. And yeah. when you hold a tooth this size, and you, just you, for the record, this is the real, this is a real tooth. This is a this real is tooth. not, not a fabrication. This is a real tooth. This is a real tooth. Real, real and tooth. And 
when you're talking to students, you can say with a tooth like this, as opposed to a tooth this big, that this animal was officially bigger than T. Rex. Bigger than T. Rex. God, now see, that's cool. Yes. And it, it made the news a couple of years ago. It's officially passing officially T. Rex. Passing T -Rex. That's, that is cool. Spinosaurus, man. That's awesome. Eric, I cannot thank you enough for taking the time. You're welcome. And to uh, teach not only me, but everybody out there watching. So stay tuned to our YouTube channel, Chasing History Facebook page. We'll never, ever, ever be on Twitter. I like Twitter. That's why. No Twitter. And, uh, yeah, come to the store and check us out. So, Eric, thanks, man. Yahoo! Woohoo! <laughs> awesome.